Welcome to another deep dive today. Um, we're going to be talking all about, you know, cancer research and a potential new weapon in the fight. So are you ready to kind of unpack this thing called enoblitazumab? Oh, I'm ready. Yeah, this is, um, it's a fascinating area of study. And uh, we're looking at an article that was published on Anthony Genie's blog just last week, uh, January 14th, 2025. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always excited about uh, new treatments that are coming out. And this one seems particularly interesting because it targets a protein called B7H3. Now, I know some of our listeners might be thinking, B7H3, what is that? Could we break that down a little bit? Yeah, for sure, for sure. B7H3 is a protein found on the surface of a lot of different types of cancer cells. And think of it as a shield. It helps these cells hide from the body's immune system. Okay, so it's like cancer's invisibility cloak. Exactly. It helps them evade, you know, detection by the immune system, which would normally recognize and attack those harmful cells. Wow, that's that's pretty sneaky. So how does this uh, enoblutuzumab actually work to combat that? Does it rip off the cloak? It's a great way to think about it. Enoblutuzumab is a monoclonal antibody, which means it's designed to target a very, very specific protein. In this case, B7H3. It basically latches onto the protein and disrupts its ability to shield the cancer cells. Ah, so it's like taking away their camouflage. But then what happens? How does that lead to the cancer being destroyed? So that's where it gets really interesting. Once enoblutuzumab binds to B7H3, it triggers a cascade of events that ultimately alerts the immune system to the presence of the cancer cells. See, B7H3 normally binds to a receptor on immune cells called T cells, and this binding basically puts the P cells to sleep. It prevents them from attacking the cancer. So B7H3 is like a lullaby for the immune system. Yeah, precisely. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, Pertuzumab comes along, it blocks that binding, it wakes up the T cells and gives them the green light to attack and destroy the cancer cells. Wow. So it's not just removing the shield, it's actually activating the body's own defenses to fight back. That's pretty amazing. Now, the article mentions that enoblutuzumab is showing promise in treating a range of cancers. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, it's being investigated for its potential to treat several types of cancer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things like prostate cancer, sarcoma, and ovarian cancer. And um, what's really kind of fascinating is that these are all very different types of cancer, but they share this commonality of expressing B7H3 on their surface. So it's like a master key that can unlock the immune system's potential to fight a variety of cancers. Mm -hmm. That's pretty remarkable. But I imagine developing these kinds of, you know, cutting edge therapies is no easy feat and probably comes with a pretty hefty price tag. You're right. Developing these therapies is incredibly complex and often expensive. But there is some good news on that front. Something called biosimilars. Biosimilars. Now, that's a term I haven't heard before. Can you can you explain what those are and how they relate to all of this? Yeah. A biosimilar is essentially a very, very close copy of an existing FDA-approved biologic drug. They like it like a generic version of a complex biologic medication, like enoblutuzumab. Okay, so it's like getting the same effect, but potentially at a lower cost? That's the idea. Biosimilars have to meet very strict standards to ensure they're just as safe and effective as the original biologic drug. But, you know, because they don't require the same level of initial development, they can be produced at a lower cost. That sounds like a win-win situation for both researchers and patients. So how far along are we in terms of biosimilars for enoblutuzumab? Is this something that's already available? Well, not quite yet. Biosimilars are still relatively new, um, you know, in the pharmaceutical world. But the article mentions that Assay Genie, the company behind the blog we're discussing, is actually developing a biosimilar for enoblutuzumab. Wow, that's that's really encouraging to hear. So they're not just researching the drug itself, they're also working on making it more accessible in the future. This is this is really fascinating stuff. I feel like we're we're just scratching the surface of what enoblutuzumab could achieve, but I think I think we need to take a pause here and let our listeners digest all this incredible information. We've uh, we've covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time from what B7H3 is to how enoblutuzumab disrupts it and the potential of biosimilars. Yeah, I agree. It's important to let this all sink in. We've, we've only just begun our deep dive into this topic, and there's much more to explore in the next two parts. Yeah, so stay tuned, folks, because things are about to get even more interesting. Uh, we'll be back soon to delve deeper into the specific types of cancer enoblutuzumab shows promise in treating and the exciting potential of combination therapies. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back to our uh, deep dive into the world of enoblutuzumab. 
Yeah, we're picking up right where we left off, uh, exploring how this monoclonal antibody could potentially, you know, change the landscape of cancer treatment. And as we promised, we're going to get into the details about specific types of cancers where, you know, blutuzumab is showing real promise. Yeah, you know, last time you mentioned prostate cancer, sarcoma, and ovarian cancer. Now the article that we're looking at here, it highlights some some really interesting research on enoblutuzumab, uh, specifically for prostate cancer. So let's start there. What kind of, you know, progress are we seeing? Well, it's showing um, a particular promise for what's called high-risk prostate cancer. Yeah. You know, these are cancers that are more aggressive, more likely to spread which makes them very, very challenging to treat. Yeah. So for, you know, patients facing those kinds of uh, aggressive cancers, you know, this, you know, blutuzumab could be a real game changer. That's what researchers are hoping for. You see, traditional therapies for prostate cancer, they often come with, uh, you know, significant side effects. Mm -hmm. And they're not always effective, especially for those high-risk cases. And that's where enoblutuzumab's unique approach comes in. You know, by targeting B7H3 and harnessing the power of the immune system, it offers a whole new way to to fight these cancers. Exactly. And what's uh, what's exciting is that we're seeing this potential not just in prostate cancer, but also in sarcoma. Now, I know sarcoma is kind of a broad term. So can you just remind our listeners what exactly that encompasses? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sarcoma, uh, it refers to a whole group of cancers that develop in the connective tissues of the body. Uh, you know, things like bones, muscles, cartilage, tendons. That's right. And what makes enolutuzumab a potential weapon against sarcoma is that, um, you know, many types of sarcoma have been found to have high levels of this B7H3 expression. Ah, so that makes them, you know, prime targets for enolutuzumab's approach. It's like having a key that fits multiple locks. Yeah, that's a great analogy. You know, by targeting B7H3, we can potentially unlock the immune system's ability to fight a wide range of these sarcomas. Now, we also touched on combination therapies in the uh, in the last part. Can you elaborate a little bit on on what that means and how it applies to enoblutuzumab? Sure. Combination therapy basically means, um, you know, using enoblutuzumab along with other types of cancer treatments, such as chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or even other immunotherapies. So it's like creating a multi-pronged attack on the cancer, like yeah. hitting it from all different angles. Precisely. And the rationale behind this approach is that by combining these different treatments, we can potentially enhance their overall effectiveness and overcome the limitations of any one single therapy. Yeah, it's like building a dream team of cancer fighters, each with their own unique skills and strengths. I like that analogy. And the early research on combining enolutuzumab with other therapies is uh, its quite promising. One example is combining it with a type of immunotherapy called a PD-1 inhibitor. Now, PD-1 inhibitors, those are... Um, you you know, those are designed to block a protein that acts like a break on the immune system. That's right. They basically release the breaks, allowing the immune system to mount a more powerful attack against the cancer cells. So if I understand this correctly, using an oblutuzumab and a PD-1 inhibitor together, it would be like removing the cancer shield and then unleashing a supercharged immune system to fight back. Exactly. That's a, that's a great way to visualize it. And this, uh, this particular combination is showing a lot of promise in treating some very challenging cancers, like certain types of lung cancer and melanoma. Now, the article also mentions that enoblutuzumab is being investigated for its potential in treating a rare and aggressive bone cancer called Ewing sarcoma. And this one, this one really caught my attention because it primarily affects children and young adults, you know, which makes finding uh, effective treatments, you know, even more crucial. I agree. You know, Ewing sarcoma is notoriously difficult to treat with conventional therapies. So the fact that enoplatuzumab is showing some promise in uh, preclinical studies for this type of cancer, you know, it offers a glimmer of hope for these young patients. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good reminder that even for uh, rare and aggressive cancers, you know, research is ongoing and and new possibilities are constantly emerging. And it's not just Ewing sarcoma. You know, blutuzumab is also being investigated for its potential in treating ovarian cancer, uh, another cancer that is often diagnosed at a later stage, making it much harder to treat. Right. So having these new treatment options like enoblutuzumab, it, you know, it could be a real game changer for uh, women facing ovarian cancer. Absolutely. And what's particularly interesting about uh, ovarian cancer is that it often expresses high levels of this um, 
you know, this B7H3, making it, you know, potentially a very good candidate for immunoblutuzumab therapy. So we're seeing a pattern here with all these different types of cancer. You know, the presence of B7H3 seems to be this common thread, you know, linking them to immunoblutuzumab's potential. You're absolutely right. The fact that B7H3 is expressed in such a wide variety of cancers makes it a very valuable target for immunotherapy. Mm. And the early research on enoblutuzumab, it suggests that it could be a key to unlocking the immune system's potential to uh, to fight all these diseases. It's like we're witnessing, uh, you know, a whole new frontier in cancer treatment unfold uh, before our eyes. I couldn't agree more. And and you know, the research on enoblutuzumab is still ongoing. There's so much more to learn, and and new discoveries are being made all the time. It's all incredibly fascinating. But I think we need to take another pause here and let our listeners. Uh, Catch their breath. You're right. We've covered a lot of ground in this part of our deep dive, yeah. exploring the you know all the various types of cancer where enoblutuzumab is showing, uh, you know, is showing promise. But but we're not done yet. In the final part of this uh, episode, you know, we'll we'll shift our focus to the broader context of biosimilars and their potential to make groundbreaking therapies like enoblutuzumab, you know, more accessible to everyone who needs them. So stay tuned, folks, because we're about to delve into the world of biosimilars and and explore how they could revolutionize the future of, uh, of cancer treatment. All right. Welcome back to our um, deep dive. You know, it's the final part of our uh, exploration into enoblutuzumab. Yeah. You know, we've covered a lot of ground, right, from how it targets this B7H3 protein to uh, all its potential applications. It's It's been pretty amazing, to be honest. You know, learning about all these different types of cancer and how, you know, this could be a weapon against them is just, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The research is really groundbreaking. But as with any, you know, new therapy, especially one that's, uh, you know, complex, there's always the question of, you know, can people get it? Can they afford it? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And that's where biosimilars come in, right? We, we talked about them a bit earlier, but... Uh, I think it's time to really, you know, break it down. What do they mean for the future of all this? Yeah, absolutely. Biosimilars, they have the potential to, like, revolutionize how we access these therapies. Mm -hmm. So let's, you know, for our listeners, let's break it down. What is a biosimilar? Well, from my understanding, it's like a near identical copy of an, an existing uh, biologic drug, like enoplutuzumab. Yeah. But it's not it's not just a copy, right? Right. It's not just a simple copy. Yeah. A biosimilar, it has to go through like rigorous testing. Mm. And they're demonstrating that it's, you know, just as safe and effective as the original. It's not about cutting corners. It's about making sure it's good and, um, you know, increasing access. Okay, that makes sense. So it's, it's like having a generic version, but of a complex medication, right. which could make it, you know, much more affordable. Exactly. And that's a game changer for patients who, you know, might otherwise not be able to afford these, uh, these life-saving therapies. Yeah, yeah. Imagine the relief for patients who you know, maybe thought they couldn't get access because of the cost, biosimilars. I mean, this could this could open up so many possibilities for them. You're absolutely right. And to bring it back to, you know, our, our topic, the article mentions that Assay Genie, the company behind this, is actually developing a biosimilar for enoblutuzumab. Wow, that's, that's great to hear. It shows real commitment, not just to the drug, but, um, you know, to the people. And this isn't just about enoblutuzumab. This is a trend we're seeing in, you know, in biopharmaceuticals. Hmm. As more biologic drugs come off patent, we can expect to see, uh, you know, more biosimilars coming on the market. So this could be like the beginning of a, a major shift in in how we approach this whole thing. I think it is. Biosimilars have the potential to create more competitive, and you know, hopefully a more affordable landscape for all these, uh, you know, complex therapies. Yeah, it's like opening a door to to a future where cost isn't this, you know, huge barrier. Well said. You know, yeah. we've we've explored the science, we've explored the potential, and uh, and the possibilities of these biosimilars. It's been a fascinating uh, journey. I I feel like we've only just scratched the surface, you know. But one thing's for sure, I'm I'm walking away from this feeling hopeful. Yeah. You know, for the future. I agree. You know, the research is moving so fast, and new discoveries are being made all the time. And it's it's important to remember that. This is, you know, this is ongoing, mm -hmm. the fight against cancer. It's a marathon, right? And uh, there's there's so much more to learn. Absolutely. We need to, you know, keep asking questions and, and support the research and all the people pushing the boundaries. Yeah. To, to all our listeners, thank you for joining us on this, you know, deep dive. Uh, it's been an honor to, to share this journey with you. Remember, knowledge is power. 
the more we all understand this, the more we can support research and, and you know, make a difference in the lives of those affected by this disease. Absolutely. So until next time, keep diving deep, you know, keep learning and and let's keep exploring together.